year is 1933. We begin our story shortly after 3 a.m. at the New York City Municipal Orphanage. Mama, Mama, Mommy! Shut up! Can't anybody get any sleep around here? What's happening? Molly's having another nightmare. What's it what about? How should I know? Mama, Mommy! I said shut your trap, Molly! <sighs> Stop shoving the cork. She's keeping me awake, ain't she? No, you're keeping us awake. You want to make something out of it? How about I make a pancake out of you? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! They're fighting! And I won't get no sleep! Oh my! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I've got one buck as Pepper Owen. My money's on July. I'll take some of that action. Um. Go back to sleep. It's all right, Molly. Here. It was my mama, Annie. We was riding on a ferry boat, and she was holding me up to see all the big ships. And then I couldn't find her no more. Blow. It was only a dream, honey. Now you gotta go back to sleep. It's after three o'clock. We gotta stop. Come on! She's only six. <laughs> um, I was picking pockets when I was five. I was picking pockets when I was five. Annie, read me your note. Again? Sure, Molly. Here it comes again. Please take care of our little darling. Her name is Annie. She was born on October 28th. We will be back to get her soon. I've left half of the silver locket around her neck and kept the other half. So that when we come back for her, you will know that she's our baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness, now they're laughing. All right. Do you want to sleep with your teeth inside of your mouth or out? Guys, come on. We'll wake Miss Hannigan. Uh, please, no, not that. The midget's right. Fine. Gee, I dream about having a mother and father again. But you're lucky. You really got him. I know. Somewhere. Maybe far away, or maybe real nearby. She may be pouring her coffee. She may be straining his tie. Maybe in a house, all hidden by a She's sitting playing piano. He's sitting paying a bill. Bet you they're young. Bet you they're smart. Bet they collect things like ash trees and dark. Bet you they're good. Why shouldn't they be? Their one mistake was giving up me. So maybe now it's time. And maybe when I wake, they'll be there calling me baby. Maybe. Now what? Oh, Annie, what are you doing? Running away. <gasps> oh my goodness! But why? 
My folks are never coming for me. I gotta go find them. Annie, you're crazy. And scream down your throat. And give you the paddle. And make you kiss her. On the lips. I don't care. I'm getting out of here. Okay, I'm ready. Wish me luck. Good luck, Good Annie. luck Annie. So long, Dumbbell. Good luck. Aha! Caught ya! Get up! Get up! Yes, Miss Hannigan. Now turn around. I said turn around. There! What do you say? What do you say? I love you, Miss Hannigan. Rotten orphan. I am not an orphan. My mother and father let them know saying they would come back for me. That was 1922. This is 1933. Get up! <laughs> now, for this one shenanigan, you'll all get down on your knobby little knees and clean this stuff till it shines like the top of the Chrysler building. But it's four o'clock in the morning. Then you fall in love in the morning. Please, Miss Hannigan, we ain't got no sleep all night. Yeah, we need our beauty rest. Look at Miss Hannigan's face. Yeah, I don't think this beauty rest thing is working for her. Ha ha, very funny. Now get to work. Yes, Miss Hannigan. Yes, Miss Hannigan. Yes, yes, yes Miss Hannigan. Now! Why any could want to be an orphan, I'll never know. It's a hard knock life for us. It's the hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's the hard knock life. Got no folks to speak, but so it's the hard knock road. We hope cotton blankets instead of wool. From the crying, you would think his face would sink. Oh, empty belly life.
morning, children. Good morning. Well, I love you I love you, Miss Hannigan. You, what are you doing in there? Nothing. Get her out of there. Laundry, laundry man. Morning, 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 morning kids. Clean it once a month, whether you need them or not. Kate and Molly need them, that's for sure. Hey! hey. You got those hypoallergenic pillowcases I ordered? Three buck each. Here you go. Thank you. Hey, 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 Aki. How's the pretty school from south of 14th Street? You'll have to do better than that. How's the pretty school from 42nd Street? Get out of here, bundles of that laundry. So long, gorgeous, and Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too, bundles. A kiss on the cheek will make you merrier? Get out of here, you. Annie, you call this place clean? This place is like a pigsty. Annie? Annie? Annie, Annie here. here. What do you mean, Annie here? I mean she's somewhere else. Where? Annie just went with Mr. Bundles. In the laundry bag. Bundles! Snitches get stitches. Police, police! No more hard knock life for Annie. Annie has escaped. But how will she survive with no food and no friends? Apples, apples, two for a nickel, three for a dime. Excuse me, sir. Would you like to donate an apple to the orphan's picnic? Why not? Nobody's buying them anyway. Thanks. Stay. When's this orphan picnic? As soon as I take a bite. You see any stray mutts around here? No, sir. You wouldn't be lying to me, would ya? No, no, sir. If you did see one, you wouldn't tell me anyway, would ya? Yes, sir. Good. Then they must be running wild over to Astor Place. There she is, right there! You sure it's her? You see any other little girls around here? Hey, you, little girl, come here. Yes, officer? That dog there, ain't she a stray? A stray? Oh, no, officer. She's my dog. Yeah, right. This dog, huh? So what's her name? Her name... Her name is... Sandy. Right. Sandy. I call her Sandy because of her nice sandy color. Okay, let's see her answer to her name. Um, well, it's just, I just got her and sometimes... Got her all right. Got her! Here, Sandy. Here, girl. Here, Sandy. Come on, Sandy. Come on, Sandy. Good old Sandy. Next time you take her out, I'm going to see her on a leash and with a license. Or else she goes for the pound. Yes, officers. Now get along with you before you catch your death of cold in this weather. Give me a break. Oh, I don't mind the weather. A few hours later, back at the orphanage. Miss Hannigan, you know that pillow you have from Coney Island? Yeah. Molly just threw up on it. 
Miss Hannigan, Miss Hannigan, Molly's sick. So I heard. Tell her that she better clean up my pillow. Miss Hannigan, Pepper and Duffy are fighting again. Is there any blood? No. Little girls, little girls, everywhere I turn, I can see them. Little girls, little girls, night and day, I eat, sleep, and breathe them. No way. Pepper ate all that peanut butter this morning. Did not. You too. Oh my goodness. Shut up. Yeah, come in. Good afternoon. Miss Nanakin, is it? Yeah. I'm Lieutenant Ward from the 17th District. We found your runaway. Oh, thank you, officer. She was, she was in one of them Hoovervilles over to the river with a bunch of bums. They were not bums. Had a man came up with her, but she got away. Oh, poor pumpkin out in the freezing cold with just that thin sweater. I hope you didn't catch influenza. Thank you so much again, officer. I'm in the line of duty, and you, don't let me ever hear again that you ran away from this nice lady. Good afternoon. Thank you again, officer. <sighs> Excuse me. Now what? Did a stray mutt wander in here? No, that smells just one of my orphans. Hmm. Thanks anyway. Look, the next time you walk out that door, it'll be 1953. So, are you glad to be back? Huh? Huh? Yes, Miss Hannigan. Liar! What's the one thing I always taught you? Never tell a lie. Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan? Yes? I'm Grace Farrell, Private Secretary to order the Warbucks. The Oliver Warbucks, the millionaire. Mr. Warbucks has decided to invite an orphan to spend the Christmas holidays at his home. And uh, what sort of orphan did he have in mind? Well, she should be friendly and intelligent. Mississippi, capital M I double S I double S I double P I, Mississippi. And cheerful. Shut up! And, um, how old? Um, uh, age doesn't really matter. I say eight or nine? Ten? Eleven? Yes, yes, eleven would be perfect. And, oh, I almost forgot. Mr. Warbucks prefers children about this height? Eleven? Children exactly this tall? Sorry, we don't have any orphans here like that. What about this child right here? Oh, Annie? You don't want Annie. 
Annie, would you like to spend the next two weeks at Mr. Warbucks' house? Of course. You can have any orphan here, but not Annie. Perhaps I should call the Board of Orphans and... Oh, no, 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 no. If it's Annie you want, it's Annie you'll get. It's Annie I want. Oh, boy! Perhaps if you'll get her coat, I'll take her along right now. Um, she don't have no coat. Then we'll buy her one. Oh, boy! Come along, Annie. Mr. Warbucks's limousine is waiting outside. Oh, boy! I can hardly believe it! She can hardly believe it? Hey, kids, I'm getting out for Christmas. All right, Joe? Ah, uh, yes. Now, we will see how the other half lives. We now enter the home of one of the wealthiest men in the world, Oliver Warbucks. Good afternoon, Miss Farrell. Good afternoon, Drake, everyone. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Miss. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Miss. Has Mr. Warbucks arrived yet? No, Miss. We're expecting him any minute. We cleaned the entire West Wing, sir. And prepared the child's bedroom. I went shopping for all his clothes. They're glorious. It was quite fun, actually. Someone long Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Do you really live here, or is this a train station? We really live here. Now, would you all come here for a moment, please? Quickly, everyone. <laughs> this is Annie. She'll be with us for Christmas. Annie, this is everyone. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Excuse me, miss. Are you hungry? Always. Very well, miss. May I take your coat, miss? Will I get it back? Of course, dear. Now, what do you want to do first? The floors. I'll scrub them first. Then I'll get to the windows. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, you don't have to do any cleaning. You're our guest. May I have my feather dusted back, please? And my mop and bucket, miss? Well, little lady would like to clean. Oh, no, no. Here's your stuff. And for the next two weeks, you're going to have a swell time. Where is everybody? Oh, hello, everybody. Sir. 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 Welcome home, Mr. Warbucks. It's good to be home. How was your flight from Chicago, sir? Not bad. Only took 11 hours. Grace? Yes, sir? Messages? President Roosevelt wants me to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Mr. Warbucks. All right, good to see you all again. Sir. Sir. Drake, dismiss the staff. Yes, sir. 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 Excuse me, miss, what foods do you like to eat? Everything. Very well, miss. And Grace, if we'll get your notebook, who is that? This is Annie, Mr. Warbucks, the orphan who will be with us for Christmas. That's not a boy. Orphans are boys. I'm sorry, sir. You just said orphan, so I chose a girl. Well, I suppose she'll have to do. Annie, huh? Annie, what? Oh, I'm just Annie, Mr. Warbucks, sir. I'm sorry I'm not a boy. Not at all. I couldn't be happier. Grace, we'll start with the figures on the iron ore shipments from Toledo to... What are we supposed to do with this child? 
It's her first night here, so. Well, Annie, I guess we have to do something special on your first night. Would you like to go to a movie? Gosh, I've never been to one before. Then you'll go to the Roxy. And an ice cream soda at Rumble Myers. And a horse-drawn carriage around Central Park. Ah, gee. Grace, forget about the dictation for tonight. Instead, you take Annie to the movies. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, gee. Something the matter, Annie? No, it's just, I thought you were going to take me. Oh, no, I'm afraid I'll be far too busy tonight. Ah, oh, gee. Now, Annie, I've just been away for six weeks, and when a man is running a multi-billion dollar corporation... Ah, uh, oh, sure, oh, sure. I know, Mr. Warbucks. It's okay. Drake? Yes, sir? Get our coats. Ah, uh, gee! Well, great. You'll come, too, of course. <laughs> Which car will you be wanting, sir? The Duesenberg. No, wait, this child's been cooped up in an orphanage. We'll walk. Walk to the Roxy. Why not? It's only 45 blocks. Yes, sir. Ah, smell those bus fumes. There's no air like the air of New York. Come on, you slowpokes. We gotta make it to the Roxy before the prices change. NYC, the shimmer of Times Square, the pulse, the beat, the drive. NYC, you might say that I'm square, but wow, I come alive. The city is bright as a penny on a it is, it is, it is. To think that I lived here all of my life and never seen these things. NYC, the whole world keeps coming by bus, by train. You can't explain. There you go. Quiet down there. Immediate seating. There's immediate seating. Give in. Don't fight. Good girl. Good night. Sleep.
once again, we bring you the romance of Helen Trent, who sets out to prove that just because a woman is 35 or over, romance in life need not to be over. God, I hope not. Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan. What's the matter? Were Brooks fed up with Annie already? On the contrary. Miss Hannigan, this has to be signed and sent back to the Board of Orphans no later than 10 o'clock tomorrow. What for? Because Mr. Warbucks is so taken with Annie that he wants to adopt her. Annie, the daughter of a millionaire. The daughter of a billionaire. Would you excuse me for one second? Got any more wonderful news? Merry Christmas, Miss Hannigan. Oops, pardon me. Hi, it's this long time now. See, Rooster, they finally let you out of prison. What were you in for this time? Someone either said I still need a matter of 1100 bucks. Why'd you say that? Because the rooster swindled him out at 1100 bucks. They said, Look, he made a friend of mine from Jersey City. Rooster, do me a favor and get out of here. So who's the blondie I bumped into when I came in? It looked like she had a couple of dogs. She worked for Oliver Warbucks. He? Oliver Warbucks? Annie, one of the orphans from here, is getting adopted by him. Crummy orphan. Yeah, living in the lap of luxury while the two handy and kids get stuck on the skids. It ain't fair how we scrounge for three or four bucks. Well, she gets war bucks. The little brat. It ain't fair, this here life is driving me nuts. While we get peanuts, she's living fat. Maybe she holds the key, that little lady. To get more bucks. Instead of less. Maybe we Fix the game with something shady. Where does that put us? Give you one guess. Yes! 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 Easy Street. Easy Street. Any is the key. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Easy Street, Easy Street, that's where we're gonna be. Yes! Back at the mansion, Warbucks has fallen for Annie's charm. Yes, yes, Mr. President. No, I am not asking you for your help, but I'm telling you that you've got to do something. All right, we'll talk about it on... Friday. Friday. Listen, Mr. President, why don't we bury the hatchet and you and Mrs. Roosevelt come here for supper Christmas Eve? You will? Wonderful. Goodbye, Mr. President. Grace, find out what Democrats eat! Yes, sir. Your five o'clock cookies, sir. Homemade? No, sir. They're the Toll House cookies that everyone's been raving about. Oh, very good, Mrs. Pugh. Sir. The package from Tiffany's? All right, this morning. Fine. I'm going to give it to her, and then I'm going to tell her I want to adopt her. She's going to be the happiest little girl in the world. Get her down here. Yes, sir. Are there some rugs today, sir? No, that won't be necessary. The windows, sir? No, uh... Mrs. Greer? Sir, come along, ladies. We have iron to do. Yes, yes miss. Hello. Annie, can we?
we have a man-to-man -man talk? You're sending me back to the orphanage, right? Of course not! Annie, I was born into a very poor family, and both of my parents died before I was 10. But I made a promise to myself. One day, one way or another, I was going to be rich. Very rich. That was a good idea. But lately I've realized something. No matter how much money you've got, you have no one to share your life with, you're alone, and you might as well be broke. I was in Tiffany's yesterday, and I picked this up for you. From me? Gee, thanks, Mr. Warbucks. Oh, gee. The silver locket, Annie. I noticed that old one you always wear, and I said to myself, I'm going to get that kid a nice new locket. Here, we'll just take this old one off, and No! I don't want a new one. Annie, what is it? This locket. My mom and dad left it with me when they left me at the orphanage. And there was a note, too, saying they would come back for me. And I know I'm really lucky and all to be here with you for Christmas, but the one thing I want more than anything is in the world is to have a mother and a father. And to be like other kids with folks of my own. It'll be all right, Annie. I'll find them. I'll find your parents for you. Now, now, Mr. Warbucks will, will find your mother and father again if he has to put everyone in his organization on the job, if he has to pull every political string there is to pull. Up to and including the White House. Annie, give me your locket. But Mr. Warbucks... I understand, but it could be our best clue. We'll have the FBI trace and find out who bought it. Okay, maybe they should have my note too. You watch, Annie. You may be meeting your mother and father within a couple of days. Really? Really. Oh, gosh. I gotta go write to the kids about this. Soon, everyone will know I'm looking for my folks, because we're going to... Go on the radio and tell them. So make sure you listen, okay? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the recording of the Occident Hour of Smiles. I need to make sure that you know what to do when you see this sign. You'll need to do better than that. So maybe now this prayer's the last one of its kind. Won't you please come get your baby, maybe? Thank you, Annie, and welcome back to America's favorite radio program, The Occident Hour of Smiles, starring your old softie, Bert Healy. And good evening, Oliver. We're about to nice to see you drop by. Good evening, Bert Healy. It's nice to be here. Oh, I'm beginning to understand that you have something to tell the folks at home about little Annie here. Yes, Bert Healy. I'm now conducting a coast-to-coast -coast nationwide search for Annie's parents. Furthermore, I'm offering a certified check for $50,000 to any persons who can prove they're Annie's parents. Wow! So, Annie's parents, if you're listening in, write to Oliver Warbucks care of this station. Thank, Thank you, you Bert Healy. Warbucks. Well, I can see by the old clock on the wall that another one of our first day and night get-togethers has gone by faster than you can say, Oxens. Yes, this is Mr. Healy's boy, Bert, saying, until next week, same time, same station. Good. Gee, Annie on the radio, coast to coast, she's famous. Wish I was on the radio. Me too. Who wants to be in the dumb old radio? I do. And now for the Hour of Smiles family, it's Bert Healy saying...
$50,000 reward. $50,000. What I couldn't do with $50,000. Excuse us, ma'am. Are you the lady that runs this here orphanage? Yeah. What do you want? Ma'am, was you working here 11 years ago? Yeah. You see, we had terrible troubles back then. And we had to leave our little girl here on the front stoop. Our little girl. Our Annie. Your Annie's parents? I can't believe it. Wait, where'd you say you come from again? Our little farm up in Canada where they have lots of chickens and geese and roosters. <coughs> Rooster, I never would have known it was you in a billion years. We fooled you, Faggy, and we're gonna fool our bucks too. Get ourselves 50,000 big ones. But we need your help, sis, for details about Annie that can help us pull this thing off. What's in it for me? Freeway split. Half. Half? I want half. Okay, 25 grand each. But we gotta do this quick. Get the money, get the kid, and get out of town. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, the kid's the problem. What do we do with her afterwards? Oh, no problem. When I want something to disappear, it disappears. For good. What we gotta do is quick. Once this is all over with, Linda, I'll meet ya. Where? Oh, yeah. Easy Street. Easy Street, Annie is the key, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, yeah. Oh no, Rooster and Lily have worked out a scam. Maybe Warbucks will find Annie's real parents first. Well, Miss Proud? I'm sorry, Annie. I've spoken to more than a thousand people claiming to be your parents, but they were all lies and fakes. Ah, uh, gee. Are you certain? Yes, sir. None of them knew about the locket. I'm so sorry. I was sure somebody was going to be my mother and father. Mr. Warbucks, this just came by special messenger from the FBI. Ah, uh, finally. Agent Gunderson located the manufacturer of Annie's locket in Utica, New York. Oh boy! Over 90,000 were made and sold. Ah, gee. Annie, I'm afraid the FBI doesn't think there's a chance in a million of tracing your parents through the locket. I'm sorry, Annie. That's okay. 
You did your best. Anyway, I guess a kid can get along without books. You turned out all right. Grace? Yes, sir? Do you have those legal papers I gave you the other day? Right here. Annie, I want to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes or no? Well, if I can't have my mother and father, I wouldn't want anyone else in the world for a father than you, Mr. Warbucks. Annie, this isn't just going to be an adoption. It's going to be a celebration. And you can have anyone in the world you would like to come to it. Who would you like? Well, I guess I'd like uh, Miss Farrell and Mr. Drake and Mrs. Pugh and all everyone here. Drake? Drake? Yes, sir? Tell the staff to get spiffed up. They're going to be the guests at Annie's adoption party. Yes, sir. Oh, and the kids. It'll be way past their bedtime by now. But I'll tell you what. We'll have everyone from the orphanage here for a big Christmas party. Miss Hannigan, too? Why not? Annie, I'm the luckiest man. And I'm the luckiest kid. I'm sorry, sir. We have unexpected guests. Excuse us, folks. Jerry, look, there's our Annie. Who are you? Honey, we're your mom and dad. Under the name Ralph Mudd. And this here is the wife, Shirley. And you're Annie Mudge. Annie Mudge? We loved you, Annie, but we had to leave you behind. We've seen a great number of people who... We assumed you that you want proof of who we are. Here is the driving side. And she has the birth certificate. Baby girl, name Anna Elizabeth Mudge, born here, Ralph and Shirley Mudge, New York, New York, October 28, 1922. October 28, that's my birthday. Ralph, look, Annie's wearing the locket. When we left Annie at the orphanage, we gave her half of a silver locket so that when we, we come back, she'll know that she's our baby. Oh, thank God, Ralph. She's our Annie. Mr. Marge, what about the money? Well, we ain't got much, but we'd ha be happy to give you whatever. Haven't you heard that I've offered a certified check? for $50,000 to anyone who can prove their Annie's parents. Well, we don't want no money. We just want to get Annie in. But on the other hand, Ralph, remember that little pig farm out in New Jersey? With $50,000, we can afford to bring Annie upright in the country. Would you mind if Annie stayed here until tomorrow morning Christmas? Then you could pick up any and the check. Whatever you prefer, sir. Bye, Annie, love. Until tomorrow, honey, and you'll be spending the rest of your day with us. Oops, pardon me, Blondie. Well, this is wonderful news. Drake, champagne. Yes, sir. We must celebrate, because we've just heard the most wonderful news in the world. Annie has found her mother and father, and I propose a toast to Annie Mudge. To Annie Mudge. <laughs> Annie. I've lost my Annie. Sir, I have the strangest feeling that I've seen that Mr. Mudge before, and that he's not who he says he is. Then I won't give her up till we're certain. But how? I'll find a way if I have to go straight to the top to the President of the United States. Even if he is a Democrat. Finally, Christmas morning has arrived. But will it be a merry one after all? 
Silly to cry, nothing to fear. Betcha where they live's as nice as right here. Betcha my life is gonna be swell. Looking at them, it's easy to tell. So maybe y'all forget how nice he was to me and how I was almost his baby. Maybe. Mr. Warbucks, my agent had inspected your entire mansion and nothing suspicious was found. Very well. Merry Christmas, Mr. Warbucks, Miss Farrell. You're up early. You're up early, too. We've been up all night, dear. FBI men coming and going. And did you know that Eleanor Roosevelt is here? Really? Mrs. Roosevelt? Merry Christmas, Mrs. Roosevelt. Merry Christmas, Annie. Annie, early this morning, FBI Director Hoover telephoned me with some very sad news. We succeeded in retracing the, the identity of your parents. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Munch. No, dear. David and Margaret Bennett. What? Annie. And your mother and father passed away a long time ago. You mean I'm an orphan after all? Are you alright, Annie? Yeah, because I know they loved me, and they would have come back to me if they were you know. I love you, Annie Bennett. And I love you too, Mr. Warbucks. Now, who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? The birth certificate could have been easily been forged, but no one knew about the lock except us. And the FBI, of course. And Miss Hannigan. And Miss Hannigan. Miss Hannigan, sir, and the children from the orphanage. Hi, kids. Hi, Annie. Hi, Annie. Hi, Look, kids, there's presents here for all of us. Ah, uh, Miss Hannigan, I'm delighted to meet you. Same here, and I'd nose you anywheres. Miss Hannigan, let me introduce you to everyone. You know my secretary, Miss Farrell, and this is the First Lady of the United States, and this is my butler, Drake. Mr. Warbucks, this just came from the FBI. Ah, now it all fits together. Sir, Mr. and Mrs. Mudge. Good morning. Merry Christmas, one and all. Merry Christmas. We didn't want to bother you on Christmas and all. We just came by to pick up Annie and the check. Oh, yes, of course. The check. Here we are, Mr. Mudge. $50,000 certified. Certified. To the order of the jig is up? Yes, the jig is up. Daniel Francis Hannigan, also known as Bruce Hannigan, also known as Ralph Mudge, also known as Danny the Pig. <gasps> Lewis, take that away. Yes, Miss <laughs> And I believe you'll find this woman is their accomplice. I swear, I'd never seen these people till yesterday. Eh, uh, come off it, Aggie. Oh, Annie, Annie, tell them how good and nice I always was to you. Gee, I'm sorry, Miss Hannigan, but remember the one thing you always taught me. Never tell a lie. Little brat. <laughs> Hannigan's gone for good. Hooray! 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 And you won't have to work anymore. Hooray! 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 Yes, girls, and for half for all of us, this Christmas is going to be the beginning of a wonderful new life. A new deal. Hey, I rather like that. A new deal! So do I, Eleanor. A new deal.
Just thinking about tomorrow Slips away the cobwebs and the sorrow Till there's none When I'm stuck with the day That's my I just think I'm my chest And it's love And it's production of Annie Jr. Thanks for watching. It's the hard knock life for us. It's the hard knock life for us. Instead of treated, we get tricked. Instead of kisses, we get kicked. It's the hard knock life. Got no folks to speak. Uh, so it's a hard knock road, we hope. Cotton blankets, stand up wool, empty bellies, stand up full. It's a hard knock life. Don't it feel like the wind is always howling? Don't it seem like there's never any light? Once a day, don't you want to throw the towel in? It's easier than putting up a fight. Popcorn? What do you say to some popcorn? I 
I haven't had popcorn since. <sighs> I'm like, <laughs> oh no, I just like, I forgot where to look. Popcorn? What do you say is some popcorn? I haven't had popcorn since. I just want some popcorn. I was born into a very poor family. Both of my parents died before I was 10. But I made a promise to myself. One way, one way or another, I was going to be rich. Very rich. That was a good idea. Yeah. Why am I here twice? So maybe now. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Something happened. <coughs> that was weird. I always start that. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh. <laughs> what is wrong? Drink! <laughs> sorry, I just. Something <laughs> happened. <laughs> my, 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 my. A $50,000 reward. 50000 But I couldn't do Oh, no. Now? Excuse us, ma'am. Are you the lady that runs this? Oh, you're all... I'm sorry. I I don't know how to turn this cap this caption thing off, and it says Jesus, ma'am. Even no wait, were you recording? Even that's a blue word. It is. Is someone frozen? Okay. She looks like Frida Kahlo right now. Can I see? Are you certain? Yes, sir. None of them knew about the locket. I'm so sorry. What? What's happening? Here. Probably like fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, three, two, one. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, like, my head is <laughs> I cannot do it. Like, when you say, don't be serious. Like, I'm funny. And when I'm funny, I don't want to be. Hannigan, I'm delighted to meet you. Same here, and I'd nose you anywheres. Sorry. Something just happened. And I believe you'll find this woman as their accomplice. I forgot my line. Yeah. 
Gee, Miss Hannigan, I wish I could. But remember the one thing you always taught me. Never tell a lie. Brat. The most. <laughs> Vamos. No. Vamos. No, I'm not. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm gonna sneeze. But That's what he looks like when he sneezes. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Soundtrack. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, there. Am I looking at the camera now? <laughs>